Hello, my friends. This is Heather. This is the Back to Me podcast, and this is one of my so amazing, outstanding celebrity coach chats. This one was with Deanna Lawson Langford, and this one we are talking about the business life blend, which is super fascinating and a new way to view trying to be in business and in the community and be well. So, enjoy the episode. Take care. I will see you soon. Hi, my friends. Welcome. This is the Back to Me podcast, and this is Heather, and I am super excited that you're here. You are going to hear some tips and some tricks and some ideas to help you live your happiest and healthiest self. I call it Back to Me because when you are taking care of yourself, back to me, then you can take better care of others and we can all make the world a better place. This is Wellness Your Way and I am super happy that you're here. I need some kind of music. Need music. We need music. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Blake's, Blake has music on his. I'm jealous. Like awesome. I got to figure out how to get music. So we are live. It says we're live. So I'm going to assume yeah. that we're live. I see that. And I'm Heather. And this is the side on my picture. This is Deanna <laughs> from Deanna Lankford Coaching. Yay. Hey. And this is our coach coffee chat. Um, I I could read your whole introduction, your bio. No. Oh, do you want me to? No, no. No, no, no. <laughs> no, <Okay>. no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Not while I'm sitting chat. here. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but I did post it for people to check out. And um, I don't think I posted a link. So at some point, we'll post a link to your stuff um, so that people can mm -hmm. find you. But mm -hmm. I was super interested to talk to you. So the, I've been using these coach coffee chats to kind of bring different coaches or even just different professionals in that I know who can offer some help and some assistance and some ideas on mm -hmm. um, a whole variety of things. I talked to Dr. Greg about... Um, the brain and mm. how to get the brain going. I talked to a, a woman about um, energy, like using, like mm. balancing your energy. Um, I talked to Patty, the bookkeeping lady, like there's been a whole variety. And today, yay, is Deanna. <laughs> and we're talking about, what did I say we were, gonna, we were talking about? Business coaching versus life coaching. Yeah, and kind of how that all can blend together, or some people need it to blend together, right? Well, sometimes when I think about it, like they, how you can't really separate them. Yes. I mean, your business is part of your life. Maybe the business is a subset of it, but mm -hmm. right. So, what is your view? Like, I like wanted to know your either or idea. Like, what? Yeah. what well, I think so. I think sometimes, um, and, and so I'm not. I'm not down on one particular style of coaching, not at all. Um, you know, if you are saying, "Hey, I need to do this X, Y, Z to build my business," I need to. We were just talking about sales pages and whatnot, right? <laughs> yes. and so, absolutely. Then you need a coach for that particular um, component, right? Or then sometimes folks are saying, "Hey, I have a." you know, a particular relationship that I need to work on or whatever it is. And then it's really that life coaching side. What I found for me, for me and for the people that I work with, and so these are the folks that I'm really connecting with and sort of speaking to our experience, is that piece of sometimes we enter in a conversation with our coach and it seems to be business related. And yet then things kind of take and about face and you're like actually you know what this is something i'm struggling with in my life that's impacting my business or something in my business that's impacting my life so that whole piece and i have found you know over this whole pandemic time too it's nearly impossible as you know a solopreneur and a caregiver and a mom and all of that to say okay this is siloed here and this is siloed here and never the twain shall meet right and right it is all that big pile of stuff that comes at us at once to figure out how to blend that. And so, you know, there was always that sort of work-life balance, which I think is a big myth because it makes yeah. us feel like, you know, if I give eight hours to this, I have to give eight hours to this. And that's just not realistic, right? <laughs> I guess if you're a numbers person, you would try to calculate, you know, that kind of thing. I remember, yeah. um, and this was like, 
14 years ago, I was asked to do a talk on work-life balance mm. at um, the University of Ottawa, because that's where mm. I got my degree. And right. um, I got up on stage. I'm like, you're not necessarily going to think that what I'm going to tell you is what I'm going to tell you, but there's no such thing. <laughs> oh, how did that, how was that received? Actually, it went pretty well. I, you know, it was, you know, you can't find this magical balance. It's like, yeah. do you like what you're doing? Is it energizing you or sucking your energy? That was mm -hmm. kind of my take on it at the time. Yeah. And my take on that has evolved. But I mean, like you were saying, and the pandemic has made it almost worse, but totally. you can't, the thing about life coaching and business coaching is, is there's always you, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can't take you out of the business. So your life is going to impact your business and your impact, your business impacts your life. They're always intertwined mm -hmm. and the balance it's making, I think, making sure that you're happy and you're healthy and you have enough energy mm -hmm. to do what you want to do, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I really think, I think for a while, if people were working outside of their home, I think you had this really false sense of balance, right? Because right. at least you were somewhere else. Like you, you were like, no, I'm at work. So all things are good. Oh, I'm at home. So, and then I think that was totally false, but I think at least because we were in a different spot, we felt kind we of felt like different. Yeah. I know we were, we had this sort of, and yet now, you know, and again, it's, it's, it's just, it's the lived experience and it's what I hear from my clients. So it's not for everybody, but it is that piece of like, okay, all of a sudden everything needs me at once. Like as soon as we you hit live, as I said, one of my dogs came over and like her little chin went on my knee, right? <laughs> okay. she her up. What's that? She's too big to lift up, isn't she? <laughs> she is too big to lift up. Yes, for sure. Um, and so that's just it, right? And so that's lovely that she can do that and that I'm working and she's here. But I just mean, it is figuring out how the balance piece for me, like you said, is out the window. And so there is that integration. And then there is the blend, which is the word I kind of settled on that I really liked because we it is that kind of blend of, okay, we, we figure out how to put all these things together and help them work and um, live kind of in that harmonious way and figure out how we shift between things as we need to. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes the shifting is the hard part, I think. Yeah. Um, we can feel like we have all our balls juggling, mm -hmm. but if something throws it off, it's we have trouble kind of pivoting. I hate the word pivot. As of yeah. 2020, I hate <laughs> the, the word pivot. Word. <laughs> I know, I agree. I agree. Straight you know, that off the English language. <laughs> totally. I, I agree. You know, we have that. So one of the things that I talk to a lot of uh, clients about is what are the root systems that you're using? Because not the, that the system solves the crisis, yeah. but when we can have that base of like, these are the systems for business, overall for my time, for my meal planning, for my laundry, like when you can implement all of that. And then, you know, I often will say when we talk about juggling balls, I was up for a walk with my neighbor today. And that we were talking about that. She said, I dropped all the balls. And I said, just to remind you gently, some of them are rubber, most of them are rubber, right. all of them are glass. So you got to figure out which ones are the glass ones, and you have to attend to those, right. So it's that kind of perspective, which that analogy I had from a wise coach that we both know. Yes. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you've heard that one, but I really love that because it helps that perspective. But when we have that that base of those great systems, and then I build on those systems like a pyramid, right? So the next piece, and almost at the top of that, is what I call like your your um, quick assessment system. Meaning, when there's a crisis and you think, oh, holy moly, okay, I know my day is going to go much differently and I need to go attend to this particular thing that quick assessment system helps you go ah this goes here this goes here this goes here these are the three things I need to do in the 30 minutes I'll have today and at least things will move forward for the day and then I can go attend to that crisis right because it is figuring out how to keep the glass balls in the air right and how to keep business moving forward because like you said it's you and the buck stops <laughs> with you so yeah. we've got to figure out how to keep the ball in the air and rolling for that one right especially with solopreneurs right the buck does yeah. totally stop with you yes. i mean if you are in a regular job employee and you call something happens and you have to call in sick 
Yeah. You know, there's probably not that many glass balls that are going to, I like that analogy. I usually get the matrix analogy, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> dodging bullets. I'm usually dodging bullets. It's just, I guess his knowledge of your movie watching, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, and it can be hard in a in that moment because you mm -hmm. feel so overwhelmed. If you have something to just kind of pause and take a breath, almost like it's okay to yeah. take a moment to assess where you are, right? Yeah. Um, and I it was actually my chiropractor once said to me because I made a comment about balls, juggling balls, yeah. and he was the one who said the reason you drop them is because someone throws another one at you and you can't catch it because you've got too many. So uh, it's like, yes, it's like his suggestion was maybe put one or two down, mm -hmm. which for some people, I think that is also something to consider, right? Like yes. have your systems in place for the things you need to get mm -hmm. done, but also mm -hmm. an evaluation of, is there stuff that you don't need to be juggling? Totally. And that's one of the pieces that I will talk to people about too, to say, what, what can you actually let go of? Like, what are you holding on to just because, you know, and I say with love and kindness, but because you're thinking you're the martyr, like, you know, you don't have to do X, Y, and Z. Right. He yeah. else can take care of that. And then I often, you know, I might, as you know, my background is in fitness. So I will often say to folks, like, if you were an athlete, nobody would expect you to be using the same volume and intensity and duration of your training. You go up and down depending on where you are in your season. And we are need to let ourselves do that as well and say, this maybe isn't the season to be taking on extra things or this is the season I need to hire somebody to clean my house or right. Whatever the case is, right? And really getting real. And I know the, I don't know, especially I think for a lot of women, it's hard for us to ask for help. We feel like we need to do it all, but you're the go to get everything done. I'm superwoman. Yeah, which I just think, okay, you can be superwoman, but you're going to be a really sick superwoman. Like, and it's not sustainable. It absolutely not. Absolutely not. I no. actually liked your fitness analogy because it reminded me of like when I was running marathons, you mm. know. You had the days where you put in a lot and then you have the days where like, no, today's a rest day. Yes. What rest? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like these days, yes. rest, pashaw. That's not something people do. Only the week rest. No, that's not true. Don't no. I, I did not say that in reality. But it is it, it is interesting. Um women especially, and I think like for this is very stereotypical, right? Like the caregivers. Mm -hmm. I'd like your I wanted to hear about what complicated caregiving was because mm. you gave me a little complicated caregiving <laughs> tip. It's like, oh, what's that? That's interesting. Because um, they do end up often, now, I'm not saying that men don't take care and don't help, but traditionally, mm -hmm. and yeah. I think women still feel some obligation sometimes to be the caregiver. Absolutely. Plus they've added on the other juggling things that they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And then they sacrifice their health, which is not what, ideal at the end of the day right no so, absolutely so what are you what's the complicated caregiving well component? i think yeah i for a lot of folks like we'll talk about what are the different roles that you have right so those are listing out all of those things and you know people people will laugh and they're like really another list and i think but until <laughs> you have really sat back and done an analysis of what are the rules that you're filling right now like we just said what are the things you can get rid of yeah and then what are the things you really have to fulfill and get that is like my first step when i go through this process of you know i talk about sort of total wellness for the entrepreneur and that's the first step like get real what are you actually prioritizing what are you actually wasting time on what are you you know because until we're honest with ourselves how can we move forward right so, talking about that and then one of the um I'm not sure if I would use the word label or one of the terms or categories we would say is that, you know, you're a caregiver. If you're a parent or you're caregiving for, um, you know, a spouse or uh, an elderly parent or whoever. Right. There's lots of different ways. Dogs. You have dogs. Dogs. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I guess so. They require yeah. care. Come on. They do. They do. <laughs> so here, there's a perfect example. So my dogs are not in the complicated caregiving um, <laughs> situation right now. 
one of our dogs was actually pretty sick for a little while. So in that moment, and she's completely fine now. Okay, good. One of that, you know, that would be an example of where things shift into that complicated caregiving, meaning there's crisis attached to that. There is extra expense. There are other things that are sneaking in now. Mental energy. Totally. Mental energy goes More into emotion. Energy. Yeah. Like, where are you? And, you know, and I don't, you know, I don't know everybody's situation, but for example, if I had, you know, a parent that I needed to take to the grocery store once a week, um, you know, that's caregiving. Of course it is. Yeah. If I had a parent that had Alzheimer's that I also had it like that's where the complicated piece for me comes to, comes in so I think we need to further define like we know all the things we hear about caregiving now and the burnout and whatnot and yeah. we have to I think identify what stage of caregiving are we in and then it helps us to say oh okay now I'm you know I'm just I know I can put it in my calendar because I only just have to take to the dog to the vet once a month or whatever or, you know, is this like crisis mode that I actually have to make sure my car is here because I might have to take the dogs to an emergency vet. So because then there's other strategies and systems we have to put into play. There's other pieces of help we have to start to look for if we're in that complicated caregiving component and if you're an entrepreneur, right? And, <laughs> and I wonder sometimes, like, because of the last year and a half, so many people have been working from home, if they've had a taste of entrepreneur life almost in some ways because mm, maybe they're connected to their job but in some ways like a lot of entrepreneurs it's a very lonely ish mm -hmm. i'm not going to say we're lonely but it's a very solo job i mean i was talking to a client um earlier today who's been working from home and he is a people person and wants to talk to people and mm -hmm. he's at, in his apartment behind his computer, right? right. So, oh. um, and being an entrepreneur, often you spend, depend, even even as a coach, t long periods of time where it's just you and your laptop. Yeah, that's working, right. Working that's away. Right. Yeah. And um, I was thinking about working from, people working from home this year, they may have had that taste of what it's like to be a solopreneur. So some yeah. of what we're talking about is specifically, you know, small business owners and all the things they have to juggle, but mm -hmm. in some ways they've kind of gotten a little bit of a taste of it. Um, yeah. Maybe well, not the same stresses because they are not worrying about financials necessarily as much if they're still working, but yeah, could be. And I, and I think too, I mean, we know to say, Oh, we're kind of stereotyping and yes, we are, but we know that women bore the brunt of most of this pandemic stuff. Like that is the reality. It's not that I'm kind of making an assumption that is actually what the, you know, anecdotal and the actual research has shown us. Right. And so it is to say, because one of the other things, you know, I kept saying was yes, even as an entrepreneur or as a parent or as whatever role you fill, you know, you had a village surrounding you typically, you had your work folks, or if you're an entrepreneur, you still had your networking events where you got yeah. to meet in person. Oh, yeah. I miss networking. I know. <laughs> and so even now, like what we miss is, you know, we sign on to our Zoom meeting. Hello, we dive in, you you you, ex you push the button to exit. Whereas in person, you had a chance to chit chat before, you had a chance to stroll to the parking lot and chit chat after. So we were missing our village of people around, right? Yeah. And you know, I see that for, we have a neighbor that has a young child and is expecting another young child. And I said to her a while ago, something about the earlier centers. I don't know if you're familiar. They're like little drop-in centers. Well, of course they were closed over the pandemic. And she right. said, I don't know what that is. And I thought, oh, that's how I survived having two young children <laughs> some days was somewhere to go where my kids could play and engage yeah. and you could talk to other parents about. So it's been really challenging and it, again it's that kind of blend of well how do we regain that community right and thankfully i hope we're moving to some more of those community pieces opening but it's still there's perks i guess until it gets cold for parents but oh sure sure yeah i mean the kids are back in school and and whatnot too and people well, have been well. trying people have been finding very inventive ways to connect and yeah. I've been into some networking meetings where um, they'll you'll be all together and then they'll just break you out into a room with two or mm -hmm. three other people to yeah. chat. Yeah. But even then it's like, cause it's time. You have 15 minutes. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's like, say what you got to say. And then yeah. you're out. <laughs> you're elevator pitch and then you're out, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Instead well, of actually building I, a relationship, like. Yeah. I mean, I still that. enjoy those meetings and I still go to them because I think they're great. Oh yeah. yeah, we're the same. We're the same networking. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah. it is not the same as standing at the breakfast buffet talking about whatever, right? And and there are so I, the systems are interesting. So um, I think a lot of people wing it. Yes. And I'm a big winger of a lot of things. Um, so far, it's gotten me to where I am. But at the same time, I I recognize and appreciate systems. And I actually teach people to put their own systems in place. Right. Which is, well, my accountant side, right? So my accountant right. side, my 15 years as an accountant, I still yes. can teach people systems. And I do have systems in place. But for some things, I wing it. But yeah. Um, I read a book recently. Did I tell you about this book, Jill Printer? I don't think so. It's by this oh. Australian lady, Denise Duffield Thomas, mm -hmm. if she's listening, hearts for her. <laughs> <laughs> um, not that she'll listen, but just, yeah, in, but case, no. just in case it comes up. But um, she calls it a keyless life. And she uses life? keyless. So she keyless. uses okay. the example when she had little kids and she had a minivan and her arms would be full and she'd be trying to get to the car. And she's like, where are my keys? And she couldn't find them. So oh. she said, I installed the little proximity thing. So the door would just open magically without right. needing to find the key so I could put everything down. And she said, that's brilliant. What else can I do to automate mm -hmm. parts of my life? So things right. like, you know, if you're too busy getting a house cleaner, if yeah. you all of, if you are a even if you're a even if you have a regular job, I can remember when I worked in corporate and I had to commute, and I could just not face cleaning on the weekends because I was like, this is my time to rest. Yeah, and I didn't want to clean the house, so I had a housekeeper. Right, and you know, she's gone like her company is actually quite large now. She's got to the point where I think she has food delivery or she you know, mm. has somebody cook her meals or whatever. Sweet. So when you get a big enough, like, yeah, a big enough of stuff you're trying to manage, what can you hire out, automate, keyless? Mm. I like the keyless thing. It's the like, keyless. that's yeah, brilliant. Yeah. That's and that's and I think that's part of what your systems is. So systems take away that, like, always last minute decision making. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, this stems from, so, you know, I'm just, organization has something that has always come, uh, you know, in planning events and stuff, it just has always come naturally um, because of the way, you know, my brain looks. And I think if I have to do something more than once, I'm going to create a method to do it because it's like the grocery list. I have a template that I just go through, check, 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 check. I bought, amazing. I bought it at Indigo and I saw it and thought, oh, this is my person. Whoever made this, you are my person because <laughs> that's it, right? I don't have to think about now I actually was listening to a podcast the other day about making sure everything's not automated because then it takes away a lot of that neuroplasticity building and I thought that was a great creativity creativity yes. right and so I thought well that's great and then I kind of assessed I thought no I do a lot of not automated stuff but it's the automation in my life that allows me to do the, the other things and yeah you know it came from years of having two kids that played competitive hockey that I would have two kids in different cities and I was managing a staff team and, I, you know, and people are like, how do you do all that? And I'm like, I just figure out how to make things, you know, work. So I don't have to be with them, not the kids, but with the, the particular <laughs> items. <laughs> well, maybe but that's you don't want to be with the kids, right? Yeah. Go and play. Leave me alone. <laughs> that's right. And so it is that component, right? And it's funny because people would say, like, how do you manage all the things? And I thought, hmm, I need to start sharing that because people are struggling with those things, right? So, yeah. you know, well, I have that, like, time management system, wellness system, because that's really huge, right? And that's certainly something we share is that focus on wellness because without our health, we've got nothing. Well, Regardless I thought that was interesting that you were – you was it the other day we were talking about you had developed uh, the system for wellness that was, oh my God, my brain. Yeah. It's Friday afternoon. I know. <laughs> I know. Also, I took six days off last week, but not really. Oh. I, taught, I taught kayaking six days in a row. Um, wow. But it was, 
the way you were developing um, sort of a kind of a coaching model. Yeah. But on the wellness, oh, no, you were doing a business plan for wellness. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. No, you got it. You got it. You got it. Came back. Well, I think as, as entrepreneurs, I and I'm a really big fan of a strength based approach. I think life and things and other people tell us that there's something wrong with us too regularly they tell us that we're we're bad they tell us all these really negative messages you shouldn't have so done this you should do that yeah, you right. should 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 stop shouldn't all over yourself right so we say well wait a minute actually you know everybody's i got that from sex in the city first uh one of their first episodes oh my god my husband right? and there's a reboot now which is so exciting <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's it's one of those pieces to say, where are your strengths already? What are you doing so well? Then that's amazing. How do you just tweak that for the other stuff? So entrepreneurs, not all, because I know I do a lot of business coaching with folks sometimes, right. on this, but I say, you know, what are your goals for, you know, Q1, 2, 3, 4? How do you break down your year? What's your five-year plan? Like, we do that stuff well. And then I just think, why can't you do that with your wellness? And it was my own experience, too, when I started my business and, you know, had some of that complicated care giving in my life and said, oh, my gosh, I'm not managing well. And then, thankfully, my coach said, hey, use this wellness wheel and and you know, start to strategize weekly. And then I thought, oh, bing. it is right. about those quarterly goals you make for your business. Make those quarterly goals for your emotional wellness, your spiritual wellness, your physical wellness. And as soon as we start to talk about the, you know, the language matters, right? That is so dog. What is your, um, you know, ROI on actually working out five days a week? Like, how is that going to impact your energy in your business? And people start to go, oh, there's a return on investment in my wellness, really? Well, of course there is. Wellness folks know that, but until you've implemented it and you've experienced it, you don't you don't yet get it, but you will. And I think sometimes, so I because I because I have been writing my copy for my launch of this the mm -hmm. six week program, similar yes. to yours. I'm just doing this little six week back to me pro little. It's not little. No, it's not little. It's awesome. Week. Six, six weeks, awesome. Yes, yeah. six weeks of awesome. Where I'm trying to say to people, you know, you know, if not instinctively, you know, historically that you can do more, you can achieve more, and you can feel better if you take care. No, I've got noise going on. If you can take care of yourself and prioritize yes. it. Yes. But so you know that, but somehow there's a disconnect between knowing it and doing and like implementing mm -hmm. it. Yeah, absolutely. And if you don't take that time to figure out how, like we've taken our time to figure out how we're going to, you know, pay the rent, how we're going to, you know, mm -hmm. get this project done, how we're going to, yeah. it's like, it, it does kind of need to be a project on its own that we put that attention and energy on. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was brilliant when you came up with that plan. Oh, well, thank you. And it, you know what? It's that lived experience because, you know, it's funny as a, um, you know, so I'm a fitness instructor and personal trainer and people often just say, oh, you must, you know, work out every day and you must have. And I'm like, no, I've struggled with my fitness and my nutrition and all of those things through this pandemic as well. I've fallen off, you know, the wagon or however we want to say. Right. And um, and so your way. <laughs> what's that? lost your way, got distracted or whatever. Right. Yeah. And so that happens. And these are the things that are going to happen. And like when I, you know, I teach people to be fitness instructors too. And I always say, it's not about perfection, teaching a class in choreography. It's about when you make a mistake, how you recover. That's the right. sign of a good instructor. And that's the sign of what we're looking for. Right. We all make mistakes. That's how we learn and grow. And then how do we recover? How do we get back on? What right. did we learn from it? So that was one of the things that I thought, well, I need a plan because I fell off as if even as a fitness pro, I fell off this, you know, things that were really important for my physical and mental health. And so, you know, instead of this siloed piece, we always have to say, it's only me that struggles with this. There's something wrong with me. I thought, you know what? Other people must be dealing with this too. For because sure. We're more alike what then we are different, right? When we when we look at the root of things. So other folks need this type of um, idea, right? So that was kind of what the thing, and then hearing from my entrepreneurial clients, like you know, better moms that have young kids. I was chatting with a woman this week that has three babies under 
four, I think is her oldest. And I wow. thought, holy moly. And she runs her own business and she works full time. And I just. Wow, good for her. And, and then I said, and how is that going? Like, what do you need? What do you, you know, and that was the piece of what's the one small shift I can make to help start to prioritize mom a little bit more. Right. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes, well, and then, I mean, again, not trying to um, generalize or that kind of thing, but moms often feel like they just have to spend all their time with their kids, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It's like, I knew, this was quite a number of years ago, but I knew a new mom who had twins and she had not, they had not been without their kids for a year and a half. Wow. So I was like, wow, you didn't even like go out for a coffee, but mm -hmm. she didn't want to, she just felt like it was her obligation to be there 24 mm -hmm. seven. It's like, right. You need which a is, break. <laughs> you know what? Which is so funny. We have these mindsets. And I think, you know, when, when we're coaches, and I don't know about you, but people are like, oh, you don't struggle with any of that. And I'm like, I struggle with all of that. That's where all the skills came from. Right, exactly. And so I even, worked my way through it. <laughs> totally. Like we have all been through that. Like when we brought, so we have two dogs. When we brought our first dog home. It was uh, September of 2020. And, you know, she was a puppy. She was a little bit of a change. Pandemic she, puppy. Dog. Totally. Both of mine are pandemic puppies. But, um, you know, she's a sweet dog. Um, and she was a little bit of a stinker. Like, she was a handful when she was young. And I remember thinking, how the heck? And I had to teach, like, eight hours of virtual classes in a day. And I had to. And I just remember thinking, how am I going to do this? Well, somebody said to me, well, there's, like, dog daycare. And I was like, why? She's my responsibility. Why would I? And, so, <laughs> and that's a dog. I know. And that, but, but that's the whole mindset of like, when I was, you know, I didn't want to send my kids to daycare. Now, of course they thrived in daycare, but it it's, it's where we get that mindset of saying, and now, you know, we have another one. And as soon as it was back to school, I'm like, Oh, they're going to puppy daycare on Tuesdays because, <laughs> and they're so happy and they love it because you've done the work to find the right spot for them. Well, and and it, for dogs and kids is socialization, right? Totally. Yeah. Which we yeah. Sometimes forget. Yes. That we're not, we're not taking something away from them, right? Yeah. We're allowing them more experiences. Bark, bark. <laughs> take them as a dish. Take them as well. <laughs> there they are. I'm cute. Now they're going to wrestle. I know. Now they're going to wrestle. So now they get kicked out to the back here. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's part of life. I like yeah. your thing about, you know, um, teachers making mistakes and recovering. If you had seen me, I mean, I teach that the Tai Chi yoga fusion. If you'd seen yeah. how many times I've fallen over <laughs> oh, <laughs> and oh teaching people to balance. Whoa, the teacher yeah. fell down. I yeah. just laugh. I just laugh yeah. and get up. They, well, it I is. It. Right? I'm like a comedy show when I teach class. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's the piece it is real life the dogs bark when you're doing stuff and the you know and it's just to figure out how to move forward with that with those challenges right and so how many systems yeah. do you have people work through or does it depend on their yeah so it, it would depend on sort of what they need but initially we sort of start off so we talk about a wellness of course and that's where everything begins because it is that sixth component of wellness analysis right, right. emotional spiritual physical professional, what did I miss? Relationship, financial, and really see where they feel. Cause that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I think. It matters what the person is, is expressing and what they need. Right. right. Yeah, totally. So we kind of work from that wellness approach. That's a great starting point. And sometimes the systems are around there, but what I most often find and what I'm, you know, working towards creating that framework of is uh, time management. That is the missing component for so many people. And I think when you're a person that manage, like just you kind of do that naturally, again, you don't realize that is that strength-based piece, right? right. That, oh, somebody does this really naturally. Everybody must do that. Right. No, let's see what we can create to help other folks, right? Um, and then some of the other things, one of the frameworks is really talking about how to set boundaries, because I know like that is the thing that again it connects with time management because if you're saying yes to everything because you feel like you have to then your time is no longer your own right and so that's a really big component that boundary setting and then one of the other pieces is I talk about like building your dream team and it might be 
hiring a virtual assistant. It might be um, hiring somebody to do some social media um, components or I don't know, all of those business things. And who else, what else do you need? Do you right. need daycare? Do you need somebody to help you with your house? Do you need- The keyless life. Totally. Like those are the other pieces, right? Who is on that dream team of, and yes, for a lot of folks, and they're like, well, I don't have the money to do that. So then I'll start to say, but you have great skills and abilities. What can you start trading? Like, what are the things that you could do? You know, could you do some, some coaching for some accounting or, or whatever, right? Like how do you, um, how do you make it happen? Because entrepreneurs are really crafty folks and they're very crafty. And yeah. one of the things, um, that I think sometimes people don't realize is they say, I can't afford it. But if you wrote down all of the tasks that you do, let's just say in your business, although also in your life, yeah. um, <clears throat> we'll start with business. If you wrote down all the tasks and you looked at, um, and I'll just use this um, kind of analogy. So what, mm -hmm. if you, what would be the pay scale of that job? Right. Yeah. And, as the owner or the main income producer of your business, is that your pay scale? <laughs> and mm -hmm. if it's not, you should be doing stuff of your pay scale, which is generating more revenue because the more you can focus your time and attention on the things that generate revenue, then mm -hmm. you have time to hire the people to do the other stuff who are, yeah. would be more than happy to do it for you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not using pay scale as like, um, saying you're better than them or you know it's not like one's better than the other but if you're say web design mm -hmm. like how long does it take me to build a web page it takes me days and days and days mm -hmm. where if i so that's days and days and days that i could be doing be something that earns yeah. me revenue yeah absolutely. and if i took it and gave it to someone who that was their there's, you know, in a skill yeah. that was what yeah. they were really good at. And they could do it in like three hours. Yeah. Of course I would pay for it. You yeah. know, it's like, and there are lots of those people out there with super amazing skill sets just waiting mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I've been listening to a lot of money mindset stuff. It's like the cyclical, you have to send out yeah. and receive. It's, it's a circulatory mm -hmm. system of the planet is yeah. giving and receiving, giving and receiving. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and I often think when we get caught up in our own heads, right, about I should, again, I should do this and I should do that. And I just stop and say, is it what you want to do or need to do? Like, you know, is it what your passion is? But also, is it what you need to do? Like, you need to have a good handle on your financials of your business and oh, things like sure. that, of course, like the need, need to do's. And is it your uh, skill set? You know, right. Do what you're really good at and outsource the rest. Like that's the piece. I, I didn't, I have now I'm okay with tech. I probably could have built my own website. Did I want to spend all the time to do that? I did not. And I hired a company to do that, you know, and I looked for a small business to support local, a lovely right. husband and wife team that did that for me. Now they're, you know, they've gone on to doing so, such amazing things too. And, and it's much better than I could have ever created. Um, and again, like you said, it freed up my time to do the other things because it's just that piece of saying like, what are you really good at? Like you're doing your thing because it's your thing. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe some people want to learn that web design or whatever the case is. And that's awesome. But if it's not and it's draining and it's impacting your revenue, then you've got to. And sometimes, so like using the example of financials. So a lot of people, it's not their skill set at all. You do need to understand it if you own your own business. Agreed. You don't have to necessarily do it. Right. So when I'm coaching um, small business people, as a, a I mean, we're, we talked about the business coach versus life coach. When I'm co yeah. coaching them on the business side yes. of coaching, yeah. um, I will teach people the basics of, and that's like one of the courses that I had last year, like the basics of right, yeah. what's going on? What are you looking at? what do you need to understand? What are the key mm -hmm. things you need to understand when you're looking at it? So when you do outsource it, when it comes back, you can look at it with like a, a analytical eye to go, yeah. this doesn't make sense compared right. to what I think, or what is this? And know what questions to ask, For but sure. it doesn't mean you have to do it. Right. Right. Yeah. And 
there's there's lots of really good small accountants out there and mm -hmm. like little web developers there's a web developer who lives around the corner from me mm -hmm. <laughs> we got to build an art site for us it was just amazing and so much better than anybody in the art club could have done right and and i fall prey myself to because i'm a puzzle solver I okay. love it. I am. That's my brain. I'm a puzzle solver yeah. brain. I like trying to figure out how to do it myself. But then I get to the point where I'm like, okay, I figured it out. Now I'm bored. So that's when I like to pass it off to someone else. <laughs> now, okay. really, in reality, I should just get someone else to do it. From the and beginning. is that the best return on investment for you and an investment Not of your Not always. <laughs> like, like we said, we've made all the mistakes. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> right? Yeah. But I do recognize that I'm a puzzle solver brain. So when I find myself, like, diving in to figure something out, I go, oh. I have to have that pause for myself and that permission to pause myself and think, mm -hmm. is this really how I should be spending my time right yes. now? <laughs> Maybe That's a good not. Question. <laughs> That's a good question. Yes. Right. Yes. That's when I think Rod has me dodging bullets. <laughs> right. I know. Just and like I on the matrix. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that question I actually used with a client last, last week and, Cause she said, well, how do I, get? and that's one of the pieces, right? When people are working for themselves, like you've got nobody that's like, is this project done? I need it by such and such a time. No, you have to be true to yourself. And so what's interesting to me is that we struggle with that more when it's for us. And yet really it should be the other way around, right? right. For my boss, I should be like, Meh, I didn't get it done for myself. We shouldn't be breaking any promises to ourselves. No. Um, so if we notice that again, you know, with no judgment, that's something that's interesting that we would want to consider figuring out those questions and systems to get us back on track. Right? To say, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this what I planned? And how do I think I'm actually moving such and such forward in this component when I now I'm doing whatever or maybe not supposed to be doing? <laughs> right. Um, a podcast that I was listening to was her. She has the mantra because she has the same thing. She tends to get distracted and she's got a digital course that she sells. So when she starts getting distracted, she, her coach gave her this. She said, what do we say? And her her um, digital course is called Money, I think it's called Money Boot Camp or something. Hmm. She's like, all roads lead to boot camp. All roads lead to boot camp. Uh. So if it's the road's not leading to boot camp, you don't take that road. <laughs> right? Interesting. Yeah. It's like something, and it's like, we talk about pausing and reflecting and realizing, but you need that um, break. You need that pattern interrupt of yeah. um, habitually, like I need the pattern interrupt of habitually doing everything that I think is cool and I want to figure out. I need that. Mm -hmm. Hold on. So she uses that kind of mantra in her head to stop herself yeah. from yeah. doing something totally unrelated to what right. she, what her businesses mm -hmm. and um so i uh, yeah i'm still working on <laughs> i'm a work in progress yeah, we're all a work in progress right like that's the that's the piece is that we're always learning and then reflecting and and being able to grow and and do things um you know be <laughs> they're back <laughs> now they're back um and doing things better meaning not better than anybody else but better than we had been doing them and growing as we were looking for, right? And I mean, I was talking to someone today about who I think would make, he's in a job that he doesn't enjoy and he's mm. not sure what he wants to do. And I'm, we were discussing um, his interests and his priorities and it's like, you would make a great coach. Mm -hmm. And the thing that in my view that make good coaches is you really like people and you want to help them and mm -hmm. you have some experience on stuff that you've messed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not in a, like, I don't use messed up as a bad thing. Cause you know, it's just, it's just part of life. Yeah. Absolutely. But you've like, I've figured this out. Let me show you how not to do that. <laughs> or maybe fast track past it. Like you might still have to experience it. You know, yeah. every kid still has to experience heartbreak once or twice, but maybe, true. Maybe I can help you figure out how to move through it. <laughs> oh my gosh, you just replaced your little kids with yeah. some little four legged kids. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. You're like, come on, honey, get out of here. 
That's true. <laughs> it's all good. It's like I've been on webinars where I was on a webinar and it was a recorded webinar. This is what's so funny. Oh. She posted it as, and I was watching the recording and she, she sells it like as a, a tiny offer, if anybody knows what a tiny offer is. So it's just like a little four video something series. And in one of the videos, her kid comes in and says, dad wants to know if you want Chipotle for dinner. And she's like, <laughs> I made a recording, <laughs> but she didn't edit it out. Yeah, that's thought, interesting. Like that definitely live was not much we can do about the barking dogs, but recorded. I thought it was hilarious. I was Maybe. like, that's beautiful. I love yeah. that you left that in there because yeah. that just shows Yes, this is life. I'm in my home office. My kid wants to know if I want Chipotle for dinner. Right? It's just like, <laughs> and do they have Chipotle for dinner? That's the interesting Yes, question. apparently she yeah. said yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's the reminder of when it was mid pandemic, right? When right. you go back and look at things you've created and you're like, wow, look at my, look at my hair. Yeah, I hadn't been or whatever, right? Or <laughs> and yeah. My hair always looks like that, Deanna. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. I'm kidding. I don't really care. <laughs> but it is true. I mean, sometimes um, we forget that everybody, like you said it earlier, everybody's going through their version of life. Everybody's got struggles and stuff they're working on and stuff that they would like to be better. And mm -hmm. It's not whether you, you because perfection, I, I think I said this in a meeting that you and I were in at one point, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if you were there, where um, a therapist once said to me, you know, the rose, when it hits that moment of perfection, immediately starts to die. I'm like, okay, yes, yes, yes. I don't want to die. So I'll just keep striving towards it, but I don't mm -hmm. want to actually reach it. I just want to keep tweaking and improving mm. things so well because there's no such thing as perfection that's the other thing you know folks are often get to that's your nadia community but well, <laughs> i don't know if anybody will get that reference no but <laughs> outside of her 10 on whatever event that was whatever right? event that was 100 years ago yeah, yeah it was 100 years ago i think but it um you know that's the piece. Like, I just think we're just so in our own way when we're like, well, it has to be a certain way. It has to be this. It has to be that. Because people are going to say, well, you know what? People are sitting on their computer saying X, Y, Z. They're not out there trying it. They're not out there doing it. So they don't have a right to criticize you because you're trying. Right. So. And not to diss social media, because I know we're streaming on social media right now. But <laughs> sometimes yeah, it can give you the fun. false impression that everybody's yeah. life is perfect in your life. Absolutely. Sucks. Yeah, absolutely. Especially things like Instagram and stuff that are, you know, photo based and video based. And it's just that piece highly that curated. Works. Yeah, absolutely. Highly curated. And I think that's the really important piece that not that we don't have those things, but we just recognize that, you know, in frame. So right behind my laptop or all the stuff I moved off of this cabinet to be able to, you know, have a better view, like my husband's whiskey <laughs> bottles and the family pictures and all right. of the yeah. you know, Right behind my green screen is chaos. <laughs> and that's just it, right? Everybody's got a green screen and everybody's got chaos. And, right. you know, until we kind of cut ourselves some slack, you know, I don't know, we, we won't move forward as much as we could. And I guess that's, I mean, circling all the way back around to the beginning, yeah. that's kind of what we both do, really, like help people yeah. sort out their chaos mm -hmm. as best they can figure out yeah. how to get systems in place to um, how did how would you phrase that systems in place to well you know I wish I just talk about like working to with entrepreneurs for example helping them build their business and their wellness like that's mm -hmm. what it comes down to because without one you don't you know, without wellness we don't have the other right, right? and we work a lot with fitness professionals too and you know helping them getting trained and certified and building their business as well but at the end of the day without that um opportunity to kind of create that root of some kind of wellness component right we we can't build upon those things until we have um, really created that solid foundation right yeah mm -hmm. and it does take time we are we are a society mm -hmm. of instant gratification yes and I can remember 
early in my massage career, a woman came in one day and she was suffering from headaches Mm. and I knew what it was. It was because she spent so much time at work and stressed out. And she said, isn't there just a pill I can take? Mm. And I was like, no, there isn't. I'm sorry. Like taking care of yourself just takes a little time. Yeah. And you won't see the results immediately. It took you mm-hmm. time to become this stressed out. So we have to like unravel all of that, yes. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. The same with all wellness. I mean, not the body takes its time to do things. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. but knowing that the, the ultimate reward is worth it, mm-hmm. even if it's a delayed reward. So I try to remind myself of that even, you know, I fall, I fall trapped to the, instant gratification yeah oh, drug. Well, we do, right because we're like okay i want especially if you're that action taker right like I want this and i want this and i remember when i launched my business and a dear girlfriend of mine said to me because i was frustrated right and she said diana you you can't rush experience like right. you have to sit in it like that's what i was like but i want to do and she's like but you have to do it you have to sit in it and go through it before you have the privilege to be able to learn from it or something. I can't remember exactly, but I thought, no, it's a good point. We can't rush that. Yeah. We move away from those difficult emotions. But it is that. very true. That was very good advice. You <laughs> send, send her a thank you. <laughs> I, shall. I have done actually. Yes. So you have a program right now. Is that what you, um, is your program open for registrations or is it a one-on-one? Yeah, not yet. So I'm um, not program based just yet. What okay. actually um, we're building right now is a community on Facebook called the Business Life Blend. So we're starting to uh, build that community. And I'm coaching and I have been coaching for a little while, one on one with entrepreneurs, helping them with their business and their wellness and making sure that both of those pieces are covered. Right. Um, and then that um, pro- early, late this year, early next year is when the program will launch. Um, oh, okay. And it will be something like six weeks to systems or the six week system to total wellness. Um, but I do have some other resources that I'm starting to create to start to help folks with that information because I don't want to hold all that back until the course is ready. I know, uh, so right? Yeah. You're like, I have so many ideas. It's yeah. our instant gratification. I want to pick them all now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. I'm going to share your um, Facebook group. I, I just went to find it. Yeah. Uh, I'm a member. Like, I'm a member. I know you <laughs> are. Isn't that, a, um, is that a, an advertisement for something one time? And I'm a member. I can't remember. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't remember. It's, it's probably from the 70s. <laughs> um, yeah, but folks can just pop onto my website, DeannaLankfordCoaching.com. That's really, really easy to remember and just subscribe there. And that's where I send, you know, all of the, all of the stuff regularly and um, regular, you know, I do a weekly on Wednesdays blog posts about wellness and right in the middle of a six week series on wellness blog post series too. So. Yeah. Oh, I actually, I see, I've seen that going by on all of the um, social medias. <laughs> Short I know everywhere you on everything so you'll right? get it inundated with it i'm sorry. so i just posted your facebook group and awesome. um did I, can you see the comments can you see that i did i spell your website name right uh yes you did i had yeah there we okay, go okay beautiful awesome. thank you uh, <clears throat> my pleasure i mean my intention is to try and offer people as many resources and thoughts as i can mm-hmm. about how to have wellness and success in whatever form that takes for them. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I talk to a lot of health and fitness professionals, kind of like you, mine is more Mm -hmm. on the massage therapy world. Right. Um, And I talk to a lot of um, executives from my executive life, which uh, two sides of a coin. I feel like um, one's too much on one side and one's too much on the other side. So I'm trying to, get them to flip their coins yeah but similar to you like our intention is really just to help as many people as we can Mm -hmm. um, be happy be healthy um and i i like i believe that the more people who can find that balance i don't like the word balance necessarily because it implies Mm -hmm. that you know you're in this perfect place but yeah Yeah. find what they need because Mm -hmm. the more people who have that then just it ripples that word right it ripples that word Agreed. Do you have any final thoughts for us? 
Anytime. Did I miss anything that you wanted to speak no, about? No, that no, I think that's awesome. And I think like like you said, you know, we're both just providing different different but similar wellness opportunities for folks and just trying same, to get same the message different. out, right? Like yeah. just continue to get the message out of getting people to um, move forward in the stuff that they want, whether it's business related, massage related, whatever the component is, and making sure that they are also at the top of that pyramid of caring for themselves because everything else is impacted if they're not. Yeah, they're at the top because um, everything, it's almost like actually they're at the base holding yes. everything else up, right? That's true. Yes. I have to think about that pyramid yeah, analogy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> it could go both ways. <laughs> for sure. So uh, that's awesome. Um, if anybody well, wants to you. reach out to you, I have put your information in. Um, or if they can't figure out where it is and they can't connect, they can always connect to me and I will connect them to you. I have, I would love to do that. Awesome. And hearts for you, my friend. Yes. Same to you. So awesome to chat with you. Yes. And well. uh, I will, well, I'll see you on Monday. I'll see you on Monday. Yes. All right. Keep the wellness mission moving. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Take care. Awesome. Thanks. Hi, my friend. Thanks so much for listening to this entire podcast. If you found it useful and you're like me and you like like helping others, please feel free to share this. Just give it a like. Give it a comment. If you found something useful in it, there's a chance that someone else will find something useful as well. Also, if you have any questions at all, I can absolutely help and I would love to help you can email me at heather at prosperityflowcoaching.com if you want more of this awesome content you can follow me on instagram heather stewart coaching you can follow me on facebook prosperity flow coaching and I have a personal request I want to help as many people as I can with these podcasts and if you could give me a review hopefully a good one <laughs> if you could share if you could send this out into the world I would truly appreciate it. I hope you have an amazing day and I hope that you find your way to wellness by getting back to me. Take care, my friend.